In this video, we are going to go over a review of the order of operations. By now in your math studies, you have rocked the order of operations a bunch of times. So this video is not about why the order of operations works, but how, and just a really nice review of it. If you have questions of why it works or need a little more basic review, look at some of my previous videos in my pre-algebra and middle school math foundations courses. There's some good order of operations videos in there as well. Okay, so it says to simplify, and I've just written under there a reminder of what the order of operations is. You've got PEMDAS. PEMDAS stands for the order in which you do your operations in math. First, you do parentheses. Parentheses are really also grouping symbols, right? So that could be a square root sign, an absolute value sign, and eventually I'll show you a fraction bar. We'll talk about that in the second part of this video. Then you've got exponents. I've written a to the n to remind you, well, an exponent is that n value. So raising things to a power comes next. Then after that, we've got multiplication or division going left to right. So if multiplication comes first from left to right, we do that. If division comes first, we do that before we do the multiplication from left to right. And then we have addition or subtraction going from left to right. Same rules as with multiplication or division, left to right. So subtraction, if it comes first from the left, would go before addition and vice versa. All right, let's dive into a few examples and then I get two more on the flip side of this video. We've got eight squared minus six plus two. So my order of operations makes me notice I have no grouping symbols, no parentheses, but I do have an exponent, so I do that first. 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. So I get 64 minus 6 plus 2. And now I kind of reset my brain. I don't do too many operations at once, and I think, okay, let's go back to the order of operations. Well, I have no multiplication or division remaining. So I have addition and subtraction, with subtraction coming first from the left. So what that means is, I'll do the subtraction part first. So 64 minus 6 is going to be 58 and then I just copy everything else. I focus on that 58, copy the rest, and finally, 58 plus two, the only operation remaining is 60, and that is your answer. We've simplified that expression. Okay, in the next two problems, I've basically given you the same problem, one with parentheses and one without, just to show you how much grouping symbols matter. So here, we're going to do the grouping symbol operations first from the innermost part of those. So that's parentheses, and the operation happening in there now, we follow the order of operations in parentheses, it says 14 minus 5, which is 9. So I get 9 squared divided by 3, and now from here, 9 squared is 81, and I do the 9 squared because that's exponents, which comes before division, and now I'm left with 81 divided by 3. You can do the mental math, you can do some long division off to the side, or you can use a calculator. No matter how you do it, 81 divided by 3 is 27. Beautiful. So now in this next problem, we'll see that those parentheses mattered quite a bit. So you've got 14 minus 5 squared divided by 3. But in this case, we're not doing the 14 minus 5 first because there are no parentheses. So what we need to do is the exponent first. It's the most powerful operation starting. So 5 squared is 25. That minus sign remains. Make sure you guys can see that well. And then I'm copying everything else. So many errors happen when students don't copy everything else. Do one operation at a time and then copy the rest of what has yet to be acted on. What's left? Subtraction and division. Order of operations show us that division happens before subtraction. So I'll do the division first. Oh, that's gross. Division. So we're going to have 14 minus 25 thirds, 25 divided by three. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. You might not like the fraction, but well, that's what we have left to deal with. And then we're gonna do subtraction. So now I've got 14 minus 25 thirds. No sweat, I'm gonna make 14 out of thirds, right? So I have to multiply the top and bottom by three over three. That's gonna be 42 over three. And you might think, oh, fractions, well, you're in uh, a higher level class now. We should be able to handle fractions. 42 minus 25 is equal to 17 thirds. And if you're saying, you know what, I, I can't handle fractions, I need some help on that. Check out some of my previous videos on it. I've also got a review on that later on in this Algebra 1 course. All right, on the flip side of this video, we're gonna do two more problems, one involving a giant fraction bar. See you there. 
And here we are on the flip side of the video where we are going to continue to simplify with the order of operations. As promised, here is a giant fraction bar. This fraction bar serves as a grouping symbol, right? Though it's not parentheses, this is the same as literally looking at the problem as two to the fifth minus 17 divided by everything on the bottom there. And I'm gonna have to squeeze it in, 25 times three minus 70. Ooh. That was a tight fit. The whole point is that this fraction bar serves as a grouping symbol because you're literally saying the entire numerator divided by the entire denominator. And so what that means is we need to simplify the numerator completely and the denominator completely before proceeding with the rest of the order of operations. So let's look at the numerator. We'll use the order of operations with our numerator first. So that's exponents and then subtraction. So two to the fifth is 32 minus 17. Now I like to do both the numerator and denominator at the same time, so I've kind of done one step with the numerator. Let's simplify the denominator as well. We have multiplication and subtraction, so multiplication will come first. So 25 times three is 75 minus 70. Notice though, we're keeping the numerator and denominator separate until we can simplify them further. So now I've got just subtraction in the numerator, so that's gonna be 32 minus 17, that is 15, beautiful all over 75 minus 70, which is five. And 15 divided by five is three. And that's our answer. So moral of the story, when you have a large fraction bar, you must treat it as if you've got a numerator and denominator that are each separate grouped parts. Because, well, that's what they are. Don't treat it like that, it is that. Okay, this next problem here is three times the quantity five times four plus 48 divided by four squared. This entire thing is in brackets. Those brackets act as grouping symbols, just like parentheses, so we must observe the order of operations in here first before we do the multiplication by three. So let's do that. Well, the first thing that I see here is the four squared. That's an exponent. There are no other parentheses inside of there, so we're gonna do the four squared first. So I get three times and now I'm just copying, right? Just la di da copying along. 48 divided by four squared is four times four, which is 16. Awesome. And then I'm gonna look at what I have remaining. I've got multiplication followed by addition and then division. Hmm, multiplication comes before division, so we'll do that part first. So I have three times, five times four is 20. Copy everything. Sweet. We'll keep going. Inside of these brackets, the grouping symbols, you have division followed by addition, right? Division, then addition. So we'll do 48 divided by 16. Law and division's fine, mental mass fine, or calculator. You're gonna get three when you divide 48 by 16. 20 plus three. And what we have left here is just addition. Again, doing that inside the grouping symbols, three is right next to those brackets. 20 plus three is 23. And so now three right next to brackets means multiplication. So we do three times 23, which is 69. That's it, peeps. The order of operations, go rock it no matter how complex the problems are, you're following PEMDAS.